Adventure Ahead! Adventure Ahead presents Toby Tyler, or Ten Weeks with a Circus. The Circus Classic by James Otis. A yarn which will bring nostalgia to most of us older folks, and we hope pleasure to those younger friends who are meeting Toby for the first time. It's circus day in the American city of Springfield, and a small and perspiring boy carries a heavy pail of water in each hand. As he struggles manfully under the double load, an old man comes out of a nearby tent and pail. Yeah, pretty hot work, eh, hey boy? Gee, I'll say, mister. Them elephants sure are thirsty. I don't know how many pails of water they've drunk. Well, you better put those pails down and rest a while, son. Wouldn't want you to get sunstroke. Yeah, I guess I will for a while. You with the circus, mister? Yep, been with it a long time, sonny. Gee, must be pretty exciting, all right. I'd sure like to be a circus man. Oh, you would, would you? What's your name, son? Tommy Davis. Tommy Davis, huh? Well, you know, Tommy, you remind me of a boy I used to be acquainted with once. He had red hair just like yours, and his face was speckled with freckles just like yours, too. You know what he did? No, what? Yeah, he kind of felt the way you did, so he ran away with the circus. Gee, he did? Yeah, name was Toby Tyler. Oh, it's quite a story. Would you like to hear about it, Tommy? I sure would, mister. Well, all right, son. I guess we can let those elephants wait a while while we sit down on this plank and kind of take it easy. Yeah. Well, now, about this young fellow, Toby Tyler. He came from a little country town called Guilford, much smaller than Springfield it was. The circus was a big thing back then, and there wasn't a boy around who didn't hanker to be a circus man. Anyway, the circus came to Toby Tyler's town, Guilford. And sure enough, down went Toby to the circus grounds. And the first place he headed for was a refreshment stand where one of the circus men was selling peanuts, candy, and lemonade. Yes, peanuts, candy, lemonade, right here. Get them around the mouth. Ice cold lemonade. Fresh roasted peanuts right here. What's it be, young fella? Uh, how much are your peanuts, mister? A nickel a bag. Well, he got a nickel, only a cent. How many peanuts in a cent's worth? I sent him six for a cent. Oh, couldn't you give me more than that? Nope, six for a cent it was, and six it is. Well... All right, then. What's your name, boy? Toby Tyler. Well, you're quite a little shaver to be here all alone. Where's your father and mother? I don't know. Uncle Daniel says I'm an orphan. Uncle Daniel? Yep. He ain't my real uncle, though. I just live with him. Oh. So, uh, you're an orphan, huh? Yep. Uh, say, mister, here's a bad peanut. You gonna give me another? Well, yeah, I guess I'd better. Say, the way you're eating those peanuts seems to me you haven't had any vittles for a week. Oh, yes, sir. I just had dinner. But I am an awful eater. I just can't seem to help it. Somehow I'm hungry all the time. Say, uh, mister, I don't suppose you'd like to sell me some candy and lemonade and let me pay you when I get older, would you? No, I don't do business that way. Well, I didn't suppose you would. Say, young fella, about your Uncle Daniel. Do you work for him? Yep, and I work hard, too. When Uncle Daniel says I eat four times as much as I earn. Well, then maybe you'd like to work somewhere else, huh? Well, I might. I see. Would you like to work for Joe Blord, boy? Who? Who's Joe Blord? Why, that's me. You mean travel with the circus? Yeah, that's the idea. This is your chance to be a circus man, young fella. You can help me sell peanuts and candy and lemonade. Gosh, me... A circus man. Well, boy, how about it? Is it a bargain? Oh, you bet, Mr. Lord. I should say so. All right, then. You'll be here at 10 o'clock tonight. And mind you, not a word to your Uncle Daniel. You see, he might not understand and stop you from coming. Well, Tommy, you can imagine how excited Toby was. This was his big chance, all right. He ran for home almost as fast as his legs could carry him. But as night came, he began to feel pretty scared, too. You see, son, Toby hadn't lived anywhere else but Guilford all his life. 
And this was a pretty important decision for him to make. His Uncle Daniel noticed at the dinner table that something was wrong. Well, well, Toby, what ails you? You haven't eaten a thing. Oh, there ain't nothing the matter, Uncle Daniel. Nonsense, boy, nonsense. Are you sick? No, sir. I ain't sick. Uh, it's the first time I ever see you leave anything on your plate. Anyhow, you'd better go upstairs to bed. Nothing like a good night's sleep to set you straight again. I'm going into the parlor and read the scriptures. <laughs> Son, it got pretty close to 10 o'clock, and over at the circus grounds, Joe Blord waited and wondered if Toby had managed to get away from his Uncle Daniel's farm or whether the boy's nerve had failed him at the last moment. As Lord watched the wagon leading to Guilford, an old circus wagon driver who everybody called Old Ben joined him. I hear you hired a new boy, Job. That's right. I'm waiting for him now. Mm. You don't seem to have much luck with the boys you hired, do you, Job? What do you mean? Well, they don't seem to keep them very long. They all run away sooner or later. And good riddance. They were spoiled brats, every dang one of them. Well, maybe they run away because you don't treat them right, Job. Maybe you'd try minding your own business, Ben. Yeah. Well, it seems to me if you ease up on this new boy, why, you might be able to keep him a while. Now, look, Ben, I don't need any advice from an old broken-down teamster like you. I'll handle this boy the way I see fit. Well, in that case, I hope the boy don't show up. Well, go ahead and hope, Ben. Won't do you much good, because here he comes now. Well, in those days, Tommy, the circuses weren't very big, and they didn't travel on trains and trailer trucks like they do now. Everything was loaded on big high wagons. And in this way, the circus moved from town to town. Well, as I said, old Ben was one of the drivers. And he arranged to have Toby ride with him through the night. The two struck up a friendship right away. And the veteran teamster gave the young fellow some good words of advice. Get up, Betsy. Come on, May. Lift them hooves. Well, Toby, I reckon you're pretty excited about being with the circus, ain't you? Yes, sir. I sure am. Yeah. Well, I ain't never met the boy who wouldn't be. But now, Toby, listen to me and listen sharp. The circus ain't no place for a little feller like you. But now that you're here, well, you got to make the best of it. You just keep your red head on your shoulders and your wits about you. You shouldn't have no trouble. <laughs> a pretty long ride before they reached the next town, and Toby managed to fall asleep in spite of the rough motion of the wagon. When he awoke, it was broad daylight. He saw that the wagons had stopped in the middle of a broad, grassy field. The whole place was buzzing and humming like a high-powered beehive, and he saw men putting up tents and pounding stakes and leading out the animals. Well, when Toby saw this, he scrambled from the wagon and walked over to a brook at the edge of the field. He was just leaning over and washing his face when he... Hey, you! Toby Tyler! Huh? Oh, good morning, Mr. Lord. Ah, good morning, you, you little brat. Where you been all this time? Well, sir, I just woke up and walked over here. Huh? I thought I'd wash and tidy up before breakfast. Wash up? Oh, I'll soon break you with that, you little scamp. Do you think I hired you to take up my time washing? But, Mr. Lord, it ain't right to eat breakfast without washing. It ain't proper. Oh, so I picked up a preacher, have I? Now listen to me, my bantam. I do all the preaching around here as well as the practicing. And I've got a nice quick way of making you understand. Come here, boy. Mr. Lord, what are you going to do? Well, nothing, Toby, nothing at all. I just lost my temper for a minute. You're my little friend, boy. I wouldn't hurt you. Come closer. That's it. Ah, oh, this will learn your respect I wanted. Oh, oh. Uh. Please, Mr. Lord, don't hit me with that cane again. I'll lamb some manners into you. Right back. Oh, my God. Hey, you back. Joe Lord. What's that? What's going on here? Huh? Here, give me that cane. Why, you give me that cane, Why, I you say. Why? Stay up your old tricks of whipping your boys, are you, Job? I'll bust up this cane of yours so you'll never use it again. Now, look here, Ben. I told you to keep your nose out of my business. This boy works for me, and I'll do as I please. If I ever hear you flogging this lad again, you'll get a thrashing from me you'll never forget. You understand? Toby, boy, I'll see you later. We've got some human folks around here I'd like to have you meet. Toby, meet 
Bosco the Clown. Bosco, this is Joe Blord's new boy. Hello, boy. Gosh, uh, uh, hello, Mr. Bosco. You don't look well, boy. Undernourished, if you ask me. Well, uh, I ain't never had enough to eat, but I feel all right, Mr. Bosco. It's them who feel all right that go sudden. Here today, gone tomorrow. Take care of yourself, boy. You never can Gosh, Ben, is Bosco really a clown? Yeah, one of the best in the big show. But why is he so sad? <laughs> oh, he's repressed, Bosco is. You see, Toby, he always wanted to be an undertaker. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and Toby, meet Sam Treat, the living skeleton. Hello, son. Gosh, Mr. Treat, you sure are skinny. I'm the skinniest man in the world. Yes, sir, I'm the skinniest bag of bones there is. Say, uh, you're Joe Blow's boy, aren't you? Yes, sir. I heard about what the old tyrant trying to do to you this morning. Lucky you happened along, Ben. Yeah, like I told the boy, if Job tries it again, he'll answer to me. I, I guess Millie's looking for you, Sam. Here I am, my dove. It, is all that your wife, Mr. Treat? She sure is. She weighs over 400 pounds and still gaining. Yeah. She's what they call the fat woman, Toby. Yep. With me as the living skeleton and her as the fat woman, we make a pretty good thing of it with the big show. Samuel Treat, where's your head? You'll catch your death in the moon you're standing out in the cold like this. Oh, hello, little boy. I didn't see you. Uh, Lily, darling, this is Toby Tyler, Joe Lord's new boy. Why, what a little chap you are. Isn't he small, Samuel? Yes. As small as he is, Joe Lord laid a cane across his back this morning. Oh, that Lord man is a precious one, he is. I'll give him a good shake in one of these days. Mark me. <laughs> Well, Tommy, old Ben introduced Toby to many other circus performers, and they all became Toby's fast friends. But the best friend of all, the closest in Toby's confidence, was an old monkey. The old fellow, as soon as he saw Toby there with his nose pressed against the bars, jumped down from the ring on which he was swinging and reached out a hairy hand through the cage. Well, hello there. So you want to shake hands and be friends? Well, I do too. And here's my hand on it. You know what? I like you, and I'm going to call you Mr. Stubb. Yes, sir. You know why? Well, because you look so much like a fella named Stubbs I knew back in Guilford. Yep, Mr. Stubbs, you're the living image of him. Although he don't have quite as many whiskers as you do. You know, Mr. Stubbs, it's mighty funny. You're a monkey and I'm a boy. But you seem to know what I'm saying, and I know what you're thinking. Hey, you! Boys! Well, Mr. Lazy Bones, what in tarnation are you doing out here? Get away from that monkey cage and get into that main tent, quick. Be sharp about it now. There's a good crowd in there, and you'd better let them know you're selling lemonade. You understand? You know what, Mr. Stubbs? I'm going to run away from this circus first chance I get. Now, remember, Mr. Stubbs, this is a secret. Nobody knows but you. Some of the folks give me extra money when I sell them lemonade. And I'm going to save and save. And when I save enough, I'm going to run away and take you with me. Well, Toby didn't know it, but at that very moment, other plans were being made for him. The circus riding master, a hard-faced fellow by the name of Castle, dropped in to see Toby's employer. Hey, Job, I've got a proposition for you about that boy of yours, Toby Tyler. Well, what about him, Castle? I'd like to train him to be a bareback rider. A boy as little as him riding on a big horse and be a surefire crowd pleaser. Maybe, but he's doing pretty well where he is. He always looks hungry and sad and the customers oh, buy. Don't be a fool, Job. You'll make ten times more out of him if he rides in the center ring. Huh? He'll draw a big salary as a performer. Well, that sounds fine, but what's in it for me? You own him, I'll train him. We can split his earnings 50-50. What do you say? All right, Castle. It's a deal. You can start to train him tomorrow. I don't know whether you know it or not.
not, Tommy, but riding bareback is one of the hardest things there is. For days, Toby dangled in a leather belt trying to keep his balance and his courage as his feet slipped about on the horse's back. And Mr. Castle, by the way, was almost as hard a taskmaster as Joe Lord was an employer. Now, boys, stand up on the saddle pad and try to keep your balance. If you fall and the horse gets out from under you, the leather belt will hold you up. Yes, sir, Mr. Castle. I'll try. Keep your wits about you now. Stand up on the horse. Yes, sir. All right. Now, here we go. Stand up, boy. Stand up. Betcha, don't look at the ground. Look ahead. Faster, Sultan. Faster. Stay on your feet, boy. No, no, that's not it. Whoa, Sultan, whoa. You clumsy little fool. Can't you learn to stand on that horse? Uh, it's no use. You'll never learn. Get to bed now. But, but, Mr. Castle, I ain't had any supper. Oh, you ain't had any supper. Well, my bantam, you won't get any either. Maybe you'll learn how to ride tomorrow on an empty stomach. Toby didn't know that a little golden-haired girl had watched the whole performance. Old Ben had introduced them when Toby had first come to the circus. She was a performer, a bareback rider, who used the professional name of Mademoiselle Jeanette, but whose real name was Ella. When Toby left the riding circle after Mr. Castle had dressed him down, she followed him. Don't cry, Toby. I saw you ride just now, and I think you'll be a fine performer someday. No, I won't. I'm scared to ride. Well, you're not scared of the horse. You're scared of Mr. Castle. Tell you what, Toby. What? I'm going to ask Mr. Castle if he'll let us ride together. I can help you a lot. And it won't be very long before we can do an act all by ourselves. And then won't the people clap their hands when we come in? Well, gosh. Do you really think we can ride together, Ella? Why, of course I do, Toby. Now, whatever this fella Castle was, Tommy, he was a showman. And he was quick to see the money-making possibilities of this new team. He put Toby and Ella through their paces, hour after hour. Day after day. Stay close, you two. I straight ahead. Feet flat on the saddle pad. Faster, Sultan. Faster. Arms up in the air. Now out to the side. Scratch your boy. Hold him out straight. Now turn around. Keep your wits about you now. Easy. Easy, does it? Remember now, there isn't any saddle under you anymore. You gotta stand on the horse now, you'll break your bones. Careful, boy, careful. Bend a little at the knees, you fool. Faster, Sultan, faster. <laughs> well, I taught you all I can. I figure you're both ready now. You're opening your act tomorrow night. Gosh, Ella, I'm scared. You needn't be, Toby. I'll be with you every minute. Now, you just hold hold my hand tight. Hold. Till we ride out to the ring. All right, Ella. I guess I ain't scared anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. Presenting for the first time in America, a new superb and sensational pair of big top performers. Fresh from a triumphant tour abroad. Where they played before and held bell bound all the crown heads of Europe. Introducing to you now two of the youngest equestrians in the world in a graceful, dashing, daring, and dangerous riding act, Mademoiselle Jeanette and Monsieur Rajay. Tommy, I was there, and I can tell you Toby and Ella were a sensation. In fact, the owner of the circus was so pleased that he gave Toby Mr. Stubbs the monkey as a reward. 
But in spite of the fact that Toby was now a successful performer, it never for one minute kept him from planning to run away and take Mr. Stubbs with him. Finally, he told his secret, the secret that only Mr. Stubbs and he knew, to Ella. I'm a going to run away from the circus and Mr. Lord and Mr. Castle, Ella. Run away? Yep. I'm going home to Uncle Daniel. Oh, but Toby, oh gosh. What's the matter, Ella? If, if you run away, I'll never see you again, Tom. Oh, yes, you will, Ella. Honest. Oh. You know what? What? I'm just a runaway boy now. But someday I'll be grown up into a man. And then I'll come back with my pockets full of gold dollars and buy a whole circus just for you and me. Will you, Toby? Honest? Honest. Cross your heart and hope to die. Cross my heart and hope to die. Oh, Toby. Toby, I'll miss you. I'll miss you just awful. We're going now, Mr. Stubbs. It's dark, and I don't think there's anyone following us. Mr. Stubbs, we got to be awful careful not to make any noise and wake anyone up. Once we get away from the circus grounds and down the road, you can talk all you want. Yes, sir, Mr. Stubbs. We're all going home to Gilpin in the farm. Won't you have a good time when we get there? You can run all over the barn and up the trees and... Toby, stop! Someone's seen us, Mr. Stubbs. Come on, we better run or we'll get caught. Toby! He's gaining on us, Mr. Stubbs. He's going to catch us. If it's Mr. Lord or Mr. Castle, we'll get whipped. Toby, you don't have to be afraid. Go to Ben. Oh, Ben. Yeah. Oh, gosh, you scared me. I thought maybe, maybe it was Mr. Lord. Yeah. I got the note you left in my bed, Toby. But I wanted to see you before you left. Oh, gosh, Ben. I left the note so as I wouldn't wake you. I know, I know. Now, listen to me, Toby. Go into the woods for a day or two before you take the train back to Guildford. You're too big a prize for Joe Blord or Castle to lose. And they're going to do their level best to catch you. Will you do that, son? Yes, sir, Ben. I will. Well... Goodbye, my boy. And if ever the time comes when you want to remember that, well, that you had a friend, you think of old Ben, whose heart just beats as warm for you as if he was your father. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye, and may the good Lord bless you. Goodbye, Ben. Goodbye. <laughs> There's cane in these woods. We've only come a little ways, but these here trees are so thick. And there's no moon. Mr. Stubbs, listen. They're after us, Mr. Stubbs. Mr. Lord and Mr. Castle. They've got dogs and they're following us. Come on, Mr. Stubbs. We better run deeper in these woods. We've got to get away. <laughs> I'm so tired. I just can't run anymore. Maybe, maybe we better climb up in this tree and hide. Maybe they'll go past us. Well, Castle, looks like we finally treed the little vomit. Yep, there he is, Lord, up there, holding a monk. Come down out of that tree, boy. Come down and be quick about it. There goes the monk. Mr. Stubbs, the guy's got a gun. Good shot, Job. You got him proper. You kill him. You kill Mr. Stubbs. Now then, my cock of the walk, we'll deal with you. Come down out of that tree. That's it, my boy. Come on down. You let us a pretty taste, but we're willing to forget. Me and you're so obedient. Now, oh, you freckle face little swine. What do you mean running out on us after all we've done for you? Seems to me the boy needs a little lesson, Job. Yes, uh, Castle, that's just what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'll hold him. You let him have it with your cane. Go ahead and squirm, boy. It ain't going to do you no good. You need a thrashing and you're going to get it. All right, Castle. Try to oh. run out on us, will you? Well, we'll teach you oh. some manners. Castle. Somebody's coming. Stop beating that boy, Clarence. Who do you think it is? I don't know. I'm going to give you for the fast. You'll never forget for whipping that boy. Oh, no, you don't. Joe, don't lose your head, you fool. Look, it's old Ben. 
Joe Blord, you crazy fool. You killed him. No, no. I didn't mean to do it, Castle. I, was... I didn't mean to do it. The gun went off. And... Shut up, you lunatic. We haven't got time for that now. We got to get out of here quick. Yeah, come on. Ben! Ben! Well, Tommy, they found Toby in the morning crying his heart out over Mr. Stubbs and old Ben. Then they took Toby back to the circus grounds, and the circus folk got together a collection, put Toby on the train for Guilford. And so it was, after ten weeks with the circus, that Toby Tyler entered Uncle Daniel's familiar parlor again. The old man was sitting by the window. His face was sad. Uncle Daniel. Uncle Daniel. What? What? Why, it's Toby. Toby, you've come home. Oh, bless my heart, boy. You've come home. Please, Uncle Daniel. Forgive me for being wicked and, and running away with the circus. Please let me stay here again, Uncle Daniel. Oh, my dear boy. My little lad. You've made me a happy old man. Why, of course. Of course you can stay here. I didn't know how much I loved you till you went away. And I I know now why you did run off. Uncle Daniel. Oh, now, Toby, lad. Toby, I, I want you to stay here. And, Toby, I'm glad you came home. <laughs> Tommy, I guess that's about all, except that they finally tracked down Joe Blord and Castle. Those two gentlemen got what they deserved. Well, <clears throat> that's the story of Toby Tyler, just as it happened. As I said, uh, you reminded me a lot of him. That's why I told you the story, I guess. You'll feel like being a circus man? Well, gosh, I ain't so sure now. Maybe I'd better wait a little while. <laughs> yes, I guess maybe you had. Well, Tommy, we better get back to hauling water. Those elephants are beginning to look thirsty again. Oh, uh, here's a couple of passes for the big tent for your trouble. Gee, two passes. Reserved seats, too. Are you sure you can spare them, mister? <laughs> oh, I guess I can. You see, son, I own the circus. So be. Toby Tyler. All right, Ella, dear. I'm coming. Toby Tyler, or Ten Weeks with a Circus, the children's classic by James Otis, was adapted for Adventure Ahead by Max Ehrlich. Special music was written and conducted by Henri Nosco, and the production was under the direction of Joseph Mansfield. NBC and its independent affiliated stations present Adventure Ahead as a public service.